I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Now, I've sharpened this blade from one end to the other. And it's able to cut on all these teeth. All these teeth other than the two short ones that are in there. And there's not much of those as a problem because the short ones are almost up to the point where they're cutting. That's one of the short ones right there. But in this kind of saw, people tend to just cut up near the handle. They don't pull it back for a full stroke because out here it'll tend to buck and wobble. So they come up here and they, they try and do a power stroke where they can get in there and really get after it. You end up with the saw blade being dull from here to there from where it gets used a lot. Sometimes you'll find them actually bent. That's because the saw was dull for a long time and somebody really needed that board cut. But going through and sharpening the blade up, you really want to use the whole length of the blade. And don't push down. The saw is heavy enough. If the teeth are sharp, it will cut. You don't have to be bearing down on it. You just have to run the blade back and forth. That's enough work. Just dragging that tooth across that wood back and forth. That's enough work for you to be doing. You don't have to be pushing down on it. Your blade will last longer. You won't have to sharpen it as often. should still sharpen it whenever it gets dull. Whenever you start feeling like you got to bear down on it, just take the file out and sharpen the blade. Now I gotta take the rust off of this blade before I put a set into it. Then I'll go ahead back over it one more time with the file and make sure I got the edges all sharp. I've got the teeth shaped and I've got the rakers set so we should have a good sharp cutting blade when I'm done. For you guys that don't have a motor mounted arbor like I do, one of these orange wheels mounted in a drill motor works almost as good. And in this case, with this flimsy little blade, putting it on this piece of plywood gives me a lot better hold on it. One day later. I'm using this standard Stanley 42 to set the teeth and I'm just going to go along and do the alternate bevel teeth. I found the alternate bevel teeth with the first cut going this way and then the second cut going that way. That way the points on the left hand side of the tooth are on this side of the blade. The points on the right hand side tooth are on this side of the blade. I've adjusted the saw set to bend just about a third of the tooth. So a third of the way down from the top, the saw set engages it and bends it over. Don't need to do a whole lot, just need to do that little bit so that I widen out the curve. Then I go along and set all the alternate bevel teeth the same way. Because the teeth are too small for this raker gauge to fit over, it does quite a nice job on a one-man or a two-man crosscut saw. But this little buck saw, this is just too big for it. I'm forced into using a feeler gauge and a straight edge. Set the straight edge flat on top of the teeth and try and slip it over the top of the raker. It doesn't fit you don't have enough room. That one fits, that one doesn't. You have to have it on both alternate bevel teeth because it rides on top of that.
That's my high raker. I need to file that one down. And I want to have about seven thousandths of clearance between the top of the rakers and the top of the alternate bevel teeth. I'm going to have to go along and touch each one of these rakers on the top. I want to file straight across. Now this is a real awkward way. It does work, just not the way I'd like to do it. I have to be careful not to hit the alternate bevel teeth when I'm using that file on there. That gives me seven thousandths clearance. Now if I was going to be doing a lot of these, I'd want to have something like this. This is designed to set down over the teeth and then the raker protrudes up through this little slot and you set this so that this surface is the distance that you want between here and the top of this. The inside of this and the top surface of that sets how far down the raker teeth go. This works really good on a two-man saw because the teeth are a lot bigger. Then you just file across the top of this. This is a hardened surface so the file won't cut it. And you use that as a guide to just file the teeth down. Because I don't have that, I'm forced to do it this way, which is awkward, but works. That one needs to go down a little further. So I'm just going to go across the top of all these teeth and do the same thing. What I'm doing here is I'm filing down the tips of the raker teeth until I see a certain width flat spot on the tip. By eyeball down here I can pretty much judge how much I had to go down to to get it to fit. So that's what I'm doing is I'm just trying to hit the same width flat spot on the top of the tooth. I'm not counting the number of file strokes, I'm looking at the width of that flat. Because I don't have that saw gauge, I'm using my finger and my thumb as a uh, file guide. So as I go across there, I don't run over here and run into the alternate bevel teeth. Now out here at the end, this last raker tooth, it's pretty much just there for looks. But we might as well file them all as we're doing them. I have one tall tooth out here I have to file down a little bit more. Then I will go along with the three cornered file and bring them all back to points again. And I just worked my way across the saw.
Now I go back through and touch up the alternate bevel teeth where I hit them with the saw set. It tends to round over the tip just a little bit. Could mount the saw in my frame because my frame is a little better condition. And we'll check out how those teeth do. I don't want to break George's frame by trying to push it too hard. And once this is sharpened, it puts a lot more stress on the frame. That's pretty good. Looks like it's taken off about a quarter inch per stroke. Now on a full size log, that's not gonna do as well. And this is just a scrap piece that I had laying around. Cutting this old dried out mulberry, that's doing really good. This stuff is hard as a rock. And it doesn't cut very well at all. I think if you were cutting green wood with this, it'd walk through there really well. Now we'll loosen the saw frame up. Pull the pins. Another nice thing about a frame saw, if you want to carry something back into the woods, just take your frame saw apart, wrap it in a piece of cloth, and that's a nice little package to carry. Just make sure you don't lose the pins. little rubbing alcohol takes magic marker right off now we'll reassemble George's saw It's a little harder putting together all these bits and pieces, but you know, you do what you gotta do. Now we've got those pins in there. Oh no! Man, this is awkward.
Okay, George, the saw is finished. We're all done. YouTube tells me that 95% of you guys come back more than once. But it also says that only 16.9% of you are subscribers. Well, if you're coming back anyways, why not subscribe? Just click the button. Don't forget to ring the bell. That'll notify you when the next video is coming up. I post videos on a regular schedule. Monday through Friday at noon, Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. I'll see you here tomorrow for another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. That was good.